In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, we gather now to celebrate the second Sunday of Advent. And the scriptures today remind us to prepare for the way of the Lord and our call to repentance. Let us pause now to ask the Lord for his grace, his pardon, and peace. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all of her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every ba valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up to the high mountain. Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, in some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are in the holy season of Advent, the season of waiting and hoping, waiting and hoping for God, waiting and hoping for the second coming of Jesus Christ, waiting for Christmas. As much as we are waiting and hoping for God, can you imagine how much more God is waiting and hoping for each one of us, waiting and hoping that we will turn to him during this season of grace, we have heard so often of God's love. Do you ever think about God's love searching for you, longing for you, wanting no hindrance or obstacles between you and God? 
we can see this intimacy that God wants between us and him in the beautiful first reading from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people. God is like a shepherd feeding his flock, gathering the lambs in his arms, carrying them in his bosom. Imagine being held in the very arms of God and leaning against his breast. This is the intimacy that God wants between each one of us and him. Today, we hear the words of the prophet Isaiah fulfilled in John the Baptist, who appeared in the desert proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. I never tire of reminding myself and others that repentance means to rethink. That's the literal meaning of the English word, and it's the literal meaning of the Greek word used in the gospel, metanoia. To repent means to think some long thoughts, take a good look at the whole picture of your life, and get a perspective, a perspective we might lose in the hustle and bustle of daily life. To repent is to see things differently, and as a result, to choose to live differently. So during this season of Advent, let us ask ourselves, is there anything that's keeping us apart from God? Is there any sin of any kind in our lives keeping us separated from God? The best preparation for Christmas is a simple examination of our conscience. When have I failed to love as I should? When have I taken when I should have given? When have I talked when I should have listened? When did I look for something of comfort in something else other than God? How have I hurt others? What do I need to give up so that I can give more of my heart to God and to God's people? It's not easy to go into the dark places of our heart and to take a hard look at ourselves as we really are. But it is in precisely in those dark places that Jesus wants to bring us to light. It is precisely in those places where our heart is cold and he wants to bring his warmth. It is our hearts that we need to prepare for the way of the Lord to enter in. It is in our hearts that we truly make straight the pathway to God. The truth is, God is always searching for us and wants to hold us close to him. As St. Peter reminds us today in the second reading, the Lord is patient with us now in order to give us time to repent, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So my friends, in these remaining weeks of Advent, may we take time to avail ourselves to the sacrament of reconciliation. It is, again, not a sacrament of judgment, but a sacrament of true healing and peace. The Lord has no limits on what he wants to give to us. It is us who put limits on what God can and will do for us. In the sacrament of reconciliation, God takes us into his arms and he holds us close to himself assuring us that no one is beyond the unconditional love and mercy of God. Never, ever be afraid to make a good confession. It can truly cleanse our heart and our soul and give us the grace and the strength to persevere in faith, in hope, and in love. Christmas will be all the more beautiful and meaningful if we heed the Baptist call. Prepare the way the Lord make straight his paths. Let us welcome God's love into our hearts and let us share that love with one another. Amen. Together now we profess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's great love and care, let us lift up before him our prayers and petitions. That all members of the church may continue to grow in love of and fidelity to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may grant peace to those parts of the world most battered by war and violence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who do not know Christ may have the gospel proclaimed to them with love and conviction. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all whose hearts have grown cold with re resentment or anger may be transformed by God's forgiveness and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all members of our faith community may persevere in faith and hope, anticipating the day of the Lord's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may rejoice in the company of the saints in the presence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, hear the prayers we have lifted up before you and answer them, please, in accordance with your divine will, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and confidence, O Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me from all of my sins. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing and acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us 
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our bishop, and all the clergy, the religious, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And may that peace now enter your hearts and your homes and all with whom you share peace today. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our prayer now for Father Baker's canonization. Lord, you gave us your servant, servant, Nelson Nelson Baker, Baker, as an example of service to the poor, homeless, and young. young. By Father Father Baker's ardent concern for those in need, inflame our hearts and lives with compassion for the poor, justice for the oppressed, hope for the troubled, and courage to those in doubt. We pray through the intercession of Our Lady of Victory, if it be your will, that your servant, Nelson Baker, may one day be canonized. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you.